Let's conclude our two-part discussion on oral hygiene during orthodontic treatment. Roll that intro. What's up everyone, Dr. Eric Jackson here. Hope you're doing well. So in the last video, part one of the two, we talked about uh, how common orthodontic treatment is now, how we've really reversed the whole mentality of brace face, uh, and now people are clamoring, kids are clamoring for it, adults are clamoring for orthodontics. That's fantastic. We love orthodontics. They can do so, it can do so much to improve your smile, both from cosmetic and functional standpoints. We talked about some of the consequences of poor oral hygiene, threefold actually. We talked about cavities, we talked about cosmetic issues, and we talked about uh, gum issues. If you didn't catch part one, I'll put a link above. Uh, go ahead and link to that. It'll make more sense, obviously, as you watch this video. But for right now, let's go ahead and get in part two. Part two is prevention. So you're probably asking yourself, well, Dr. Jackson, what do you uh, recommend? How do we fight this, these problems? How do we take good care of ourselves during orthodontic treatment? And I usually answer patients who ask me that about themselves, about their children, with a twofold answer, right? We have to focus on uh, hygiene outside the office and hygiene in the office. So let's focus on outside the office first. Hygiene outside the office, AKA how you take care of yourself at home, your home care, right? Super important uh, before you get into your orthodontic appointments. Um, if you're not taking care of yourself before your start of, the, of your braces uh, in your, or your orthodontics, well then you're not going to do as good a job as you should during the braces, that's for sure. Uh, I've always used the analogy, it's like being in school again. If you're an A student before, well you add the braces to the mix and you're probably going to get knocked down to a B. If you're a C student before, well you're probably going to knock down to a D or an F. Uh, it's just a lot harder to do well with orthodontics in your mouth. But that's okay because we know it's coming. So we have to start with the best possible, from the, start from the best possible place. Um, I preach, you have to maximize your technique at home and you have to, have to maximize your technology. Technique and technology are very important for home care. Um, your technique, you have, well, let's start with technology actually. You gotta use the right tools, right? I love electric toothbrush. I use you know, the classic type idea, uh, floss, brush, rinse, right? We want to floss first, we want to brush, and we want to rinse. So using good string floss would be a really nice idea. Uh, not everyone does that. Um, and then it goes into the technique. Not everyone who uses it does it correctly. Um, you've got your toothbrush. Um, of course, a regular manual toothbrush is the bare minimum, as I call it. But an electric toothbrush is far supersedes the, the, the ability to clean teeth than a manual one. And then finally, a good rinse at the end to rinse away and perhaps deliver some good fluoride uh, to the teeth. A very good idea. These are things that you should be doing before your braces. And if you're not doing them before the braces, establishing good technique during orthodontic treatment is double challenging. My favorite items at the moment, um, I happen to grab some here. I love uh, Sonicare. I really love Sonicare products. They've got lots of great uh, studies, scientific studies. It's not a fly-by-night. They've been around for a very long time and they're proven to work very, very well. Sonicare toothbrush. I really like their air floss. So we talk about flossing first. If you're not a big string flosser, um, this might be for you, especially if you're going into braces. Now, you know, what happens after, what, what ha happens usually when you get braces? Well, you gotta get a little floss threader or you have to have some sort of thing, but most, most likely people just don't floss during their braces. Uh, during their orthodontic treatment. Well, this will help because it's just so hard to floss underneath there with a little floss fitter. You pop the water or Listerine into the actual device and you go ahead and you use it in between the teeth. It's very easy, it's very simple, and it's very effective. We need to keep it simple, easy, and effective during orthodontics or frankly all the time, if you really want to get down to it, to be used by as many people as possible. So because it's using technology like these guys, uh, it's instead of a manual brush and, and regular old string floss, I really advocate for this because your technique will be better. Proper use of technology equals a lot better technique if you're trying your hardest. I'll also throw out there um, Listerine Total Care. I like this zero alcohol. They have an alcohol version that has even more uh, fluoride uptake. 
Um, it's my favorite. It kills bacteria. It delivers uh, fluoride. It strengthens the enamel, which is good preventative, as well as killing power. So you've got your, your short-term, you've got your long-term investment from that rinse. You know, you get the three of these guys together, and they make a great three-punch combo. Um, every time you brush, every time you're, you're, you know, your, your, your oral irrigator, your electric toothbrush, and your quality rinse, it's going to help you with the right technology. And then you have to use it correctly. So let's talk about technique, right? Um, sports industry, very important in my life, my practice. Um, we always use the analogy in my practice that your dental professional is your coach, right? Um, in many, especially the dental hygienist. Um, with or without orthodontics, when you come into your dental cleaning, you sit down, there's an assessment, there's a evaluation, and then there's some discussion, right? It's really no different than in a sporting event. If you go to your hitting coach, uh, your baseball or your softball hitting coach, and you go in there and they see you take a few cuts and they say, all right, uh, Eric, uh, you're, you're doing a great job, but here's a few things you're doing wrong. Here's some trouble spots in your swing. Let's correct these issues and try to aim for higher. Maybe you come back a week or two later for your next lesson, and then they say, oh, hey, you did a good job correcting those issues. But now we have a few other issues that were, are perhaps were less important last time, but now they're the top of the list. And you're always going to have issues because nobody's got the most the, the perfect swing in the world. Not every one of us is Ken Griffey Jr. You know, it's just one of those things. So it comes down to with the same in the dental office. We have to make sure that we're always striving for perfect, and that's it goes hand in hand with using the right technology and the right technique. Sports, dentistry doesn't matter. You know you can't play your sport to the optimum without at some point getting to a good level of technology because technique can only so overcome so much. Likewise, you can also be a, you can give the person the best tools out there and if they're not using them correctly, well, that doesn't help either. The shoes don't make the player, the tennis racket doesn't make the uh, athlete, the tennis player, the bat doesn't make the, the ball player, and the toothbrush or the oral irrigator doesn't make for a fantastic automatic fantastic dental patient so you've got your outside of the office you've got your your at home care focus you're focusing on your technique and your technology you're using the right stuff you're doing a great that's wonderful what what might else you do right what else might you do you you end up focusing on the in the office right so because not everyone has the genetics not everyone has the same dental case right some people have braces on longer uh, than others so people's teeth are more malpositioned than others. So what can we do to help you? I always preach you have to do everything you can at home first, but then once you're doing that, you still may not be perfect because let's be honest, nobody really is. And so that's what we're here for. We can help out by often seeing patients in orthodontics more often than six months. We'll see them uh, every six months for some who are doing great, but for others who need a little bit more help uh, due to genetics or due to just maybe they're trying their best, but they're just not succeeding, right? We'll see them every four months. Sometimes we'll see them every three months. Um, a lot of this comes into play with the desire uh, to do well. Um, some adolescents just aren't motivated to do their very best at home. They're doing braces because one of their parents or the, both their parents said, you're going to get braces, and the, it's really the, kind of the way it is. Adult orthodontic patients don't typically have this issue as much because they're making the conscious decision themselves to receive orthodontic treatment, they're paying for it themselves, and then they're gonna make sure they, do, they try to not derail themselves by, uh, in, the, in the dental department uh, because of the lack of care. So I would always discuss with your dental provider, should I or my child or whomever come in more often uh, than six months? And yes, that may not be covered by your dental insurance. Yes, that might be something out of pocket, but ultimately it's preventative. And it's preventative because it'll save you money in the long run. It'll save you heartache and pain and issues in the long run. And ultimately, I always try to preach and promote, if you're going to spend out of pocket, preventative type things, can't go wrong with that because you're helping the situation. You're investing in your positive future. So I hope all these concepts resonate with you. I know this is a bit longer video, but ultimately, I think it's a very worthwhile video. It's very important. Um, orthodontics is wonderful, orthodontics is fantastic, but ultimately orthodontics can be a potential landmine. Don't let it happen to you or anyone that you, you love or in your life. 
We always appreciate sharing the video uh, with anybody who might need to. Maybe somebody is going into braces. Maybe someone you know in your own household is going to be getting braces soon. Uh, that's the purpose of this YouTube channel, to sit down, to, uh, to get all the information from the horse's mouth, so to speak, with outside the office, not having to be at an actual visit. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. Of course, put any questions or comments that you happen to have down, in the ba uh, down below. And uh, as always, I appreciate your viewership very much. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.